Waiting in the rain here in Atlantic City for Danny Garcia, a champion at 140 pounds, a champion at 147 pounds, undefeated, and I think in a lot of ways, disrespected. This is where his career began. We're gonna find out where it's headed. Picked a nice day. Beautiful How day. How are you, man? Nothing like How's Mother going? Nature. How Not, are you? Doing great, doing great. Huh. Happy to be here. Welcome back to Atlantic City. Yes, sir. Where it all began. Yes, sir. At the Borgata. Fall here, too, at the Boardwalk Hall. Time flies when you're knocking guys out. Yes, sir. That's what it's all about. I'm in the hurt business. Yeah, well, we're in the rain <laughs> business right now. Did you come here as a kid, your family? We used to come down here, you know, walk up and down the Boardwalk, play games going to Carnival, Ferris wheel, things like that, and they just take the ride back on to Philly, 45 minutes. When you see the boardwalk hall now, look down, you see the Borgata, did it work out the way you thought it would? I always wanted to be a sports star, and um, I just had the vision. I always knew one day that I, I would be like a, some, some type of sports star, and the day I walked in a boxing gym, it was just, it was just natural to me, and I, I loved boxing so much. How'd you start boxing? Well, I really started boxing when I was seven years old. Um, I walked into a gym uh, on Venango Street in Philadelphia. It's called the Harrogate Boxing Club. Yeah. In Philly, you gotta be 10 years old to box. I was seven years old. I walked in the gym for a couple, you know, a couple times, trained. They said, how old are you? They said, you're too young. The insurance doesn't cover. You gotta come back when you're 10. And that's when my father went to prison. What did he go away for? Distributing, uh, you know, drugs and stuff like that. I've heard him talk about it. I understand it from his perspective. Mm -hmm. What was it like from yours? How old were you? I was seven. I didn't have my dad from like seven to almost 10 years old. That ain't so, easy. No, especially not, you know, growing up, you know, a young Latino in Philadelphia, all eyes were against me. You know, my our house got foreclosed. A lot of people don't know our house, we were homeless. I never uh, brag about my past or how we didn't have things and, you know, how we lost everything, our, our house was foreclosed like that. Cause you know, I don't want people to feel bad for me. At the end of the day, I gotta go in there, I gotta fight. You know, I was not going to school. You know, I was left behind, actually. I failed second, and then I failed third grade, Let back to back. You. Cause I couldn't go to Why? school. We weren't, it's just like, you know, my father, he was he was the one who made sure everything was okay, you know what I mean? So when he left, it was just like, my everything fell apart. Were you sad, were you angry, what? No, I was just a kid, I was confused, you know? I, I didn't know, you know, I just, I didn't know what was going on, you know? I didn't understand until I got older, you know? So. I think that's what motivates me every day to be the best fighter I can be. It's just the things I've been through as a kid, waking up on your birthday, not even knowing it's your birthday, you know, not having a birthday cake. So it's just a lot of things we went through in life that who made me who I am today. Do you remember going to visit your dad? Once or twice. My dad said he didn't want us to visit him because he said that um, he just wanted to do his time. You know, he, it was more painful for him to see us and not be able to leave with us. How painful was it for you? It's real painful. Uh, you know, every 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 kid needs a father. You know, me and my brother, we uh, we suffered a lot, but we made it through. And when he comes out, what happened? Oh, I remember the first day my dad came out of prison, man. At that time, we were living with my aunt. I was sitting on my friend's step, and the house was like down the street, and so I'm looking at it from an angle. So I see somebody like throwing a rock at the window, or just going like this, and I look over, and it was my dad. I didn't even know he came out of prison, so I just ran to him and I hugged him, and that was it. I never see you emotional. You're emotional now. Yeah. I would like to talk about it. Just like... This is the hardest part of my life. But it made me the fighter I am. When he gets out, you go back to the gym. Yeah. How old are you then? I was about 10 years old. At what point does he start training you? We went, one year we was in the server gloves in Kansas City. And um, I remember my dad, he, he just paid for the whole trip. And I lose first night. <laughs> and um, I'm over here just having fun, playing after the fight. I wasn't even worried about it. But as a kid, I didn't know, you know my dad was busting his ass for me to go on that trip. And I'm over there as, playing this as a game. So when we got back to the room, he threw me against the wall. And he said, from now on, I'm training you. And if you ever lose again, I'm gonna hurt you. I, I worked my ass off, you know, to get you here, you know. 
this ain't the game. And ever since then, man, I, I became like, I won the ringside tournament. I was an under-19 national champion. I was the U.S. champion. I, I, I never lost, I really never lost again after that. That's a hard story. That's yeah, rough yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. At that moment, when he says, you're never going to lose yeah. again or I'm going to hurt you, yeah. do you love him or do you hate him? No, I love him for that because we have a perfect chemistry. So I needed him, he needed me. He made me believe in my, like, I was a talented kid, but he made me believe in myself. You know, I was just, I just loved boxing. I was just having fun and, you know, they, a guy beat me, I didn't want to take it to the heart. But to him, it was just like, you know, he was, he was working, he's providing for the family. He was just like, this was, our, this was our way out. And once he told me that, it was just like, I, I never looked at it like that again. I just, I took it serious and I just became the best fighter I could be. He's trained you ever since that day? Ever since that day. A lot of people don't know that. Like how my career, you know, really started and you know, how it went about, but that, that's, that's how it was. That's how my dad became training me. With you as a young kid in Some Promise mm -hmm. and him coming out of prison, mm -hmm. at that moment, who needed who more? <sighs> Man, it was just like, we needed each other because, um, if I would've never boxed, he'd probably still been in the street. So, you know, it was either going back to prison for him or dying. So he dedicated his life to me. He didn't have a role model, you understand? My dad was raised into drugs and violence. So he thought that was normal, you understand? He had no one to look, say, hey, this is the right way, you understand? He was raised a gangster. You're a good kid. Yeah, because he didn't want me to be like him. Your dad got sober. Yeah. How did he change with sobriety? My dad changed like a lot. He just became like the man he is today. Like the man people know him as. Like he just tells it how it is. He don't hold nothing back. He's like he's the type of person you love or you hate. And he's like that. He's like that every day. Like he's been through so much in life. He just really doesn't really care what nobody thinks about him. What about in the press conference? Oh no, nah, because he puts on a show. I can't tell my dad not to be himself. That's who he is. That's why we call him Crazy Angel. What if I said to you? The craziest thing Crazy Angel ever did was beat cancer. Would you agree with me? Oh, hell yeah. You were a teenager, but they were talking funeral arrangements. Yeah. Like, we had people coming to the gym fighting over about who's going to train me when my dad died. And I would come back, I would tell my dad, like, these people are really fighting about who's going to train me if you die. I was like, you can't die. If your dad were no longer available to train you, what would you do? I quit. I quit. I made the money. I won championships in different weight classes. I came from nothing. It was a hell of a ride. I ain't going to box no more. Danny, you retired a great fighter in Eric Morales. You beat Amir Khan when he was still a real force in the division. You beat Lucas Matisse, um, certainly in his prime. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that you get enough respect? Um, I, I feel like, you know, I always had that luck where as a kid that I was underestimated. <laughs> like, I've been, I've been the underdog my whole life. I like when people think Danny Garcia is not going to win. Who do you want to fight? I just want to fight the best, man. At the end of the day, like I said before, I faced the best fighters before. I'm facing the best fighters now. I unify divisions, and my, my goal is to unify another division at 147 pounds. So you want to fight Keith Thurman? No doubt about it. What about Sean Porter? I would love to fight Sean Porter. Sean told me something that, that caught me a little off guard. It's hard to put Danny in the same category as Kell Brook or Keith Thurman. Mm -hmm. Danny doesn't want to fight hard competition. I can say Kell Brook has heart. I can say Keith Thurman has heart. I he don't just, know how much heart Danny Garcia has. I think he's just saying that because they fought him. He fought them. And they both beat him. So I have to fight Sean Porter to show that I have heart? Is that what he's telling me? Because if, if, he, if he's saying that, then we could, we could fight. Who's the most dangerous fighter in this division? Danny Garcia. You know why? Danny Garcia has always been the underdog and overlooked his whole career. And I've never been given the credit I deserve in this, ever since I was a little kid. But you know what? It's OK. I want people to think I'm not. I, I want people to overlook me. So that when my hands raised at the end of the night, what can they say? What's more important, the money or the glory? At the end of the day, you have to love boxing. You can't fight, you can't fight in boxing for the money. You gotta have something inside you. You gotta have that, 
thing in your heart where you want to you want to be the best fighter in the world. The cycle is broken. Yeah. The hunger, the deprivation, the violence. It's kind of over. That's what I'm saying. I am I am who I am because of that. Like to me, I probably wouldn't be a world champion if I never went through that cuz I wouldn't have had that special hunger. Like every fighter has a special hunger or a special feeling that they always think about before they step in the ring. And that's and that's and that's my hunger. Good for you, man. Thanks for coming yes, out. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it. it. I really sure. do. Yep.